this is the action camera with the largest image sensor in its class and therefore performs amazingly good in both daytime and nighttime conditions. Insta361R with the 1 inch Leica sensor, here we go! Welcome Tech Pro channel, my name is Michael. I'm so happy to see you here in this hot summer day. I don't know how, how high the temperatures today are going to be, but it's still morning and it's pretty hot. Now, already we're vlog testing the 1R by Insta360 with the one inch Leica sensor, which is a pretty interesting solution that makes the 1R the only action camera which has such a large image sensor. And when the image sensor is large, that means, first of all, good image quality, which I guess you can already notice. But very importantly, it's going to perform way better in low light conditions. Uh, it comes with some drawbacks, like for instance, at the moment, this is my hand. So obviously, if, if I have it handheld, it's going to be too close to my face. And it's going to be blurry because uh, it has something called infinity focus, which is good after one meter. So the minimum focusing distance is supposed to be somewhere around a meter. But We'll talk about all these specs. Uh, since we talk about action cameras, there's no way not to mention the GoPro Hero series. And considering Insta360's modularity, the options to adjust, the options to adapt it the way you want, like you can twist the display the way you want, which I'm using right now, pointing towards myself and I can see myself when I'm vlogging. And honestly, placed side by side, the GoPro Hero 8 looks a little boring, but it's really important to figure out what the actual performance of both is. And of course, like every video, we're going to start a discussion with the closest competitors, which apparently the Hero A, the uh, DJI Osmo Action, and the pricing. Because the One R with the Leica sensor is a bit more expensive. The size of the sensor here is as large as the one used on cameras like the Sony ZV-1, but the major difference is the optics, which is fixed. Meaning that you can't optically zoom in and out and the focus is fixed. That's a so-called infinity focus, which is very typical for all action cams. The one inch edition was launched at $550 and some people will consider this as a steep price if they're not aware of the huge benefits that good optics and image sensors offer compared to traditional action cameras. Obviously, 1R is the new kid on the block, being the nicest surprise in the action cameras world this year, bringing a lot of the company's great experience from 360 panoramic cameras. While I still often use my GoPro Hero, when it comes to low light shooting and getting some non-distorted video, I prefer now the 1R with the Leica sensor because it's currently unmatched in terms of image quality. Going through the unboxing gives a premium feeling. Insta360 have always been great about presenting their devices and no surprise it, you can buy their cameras even from the Apple Store. Inside the package, the camera with a basic mount and frame and charging cable and some papers and instructions if you've missed the video about the other 1R variation, the so-called Twin Edition, with the GoPro-like sensor and field of view and also the separate 360 module, make sure to watch it because there are plenty of interesting facts to discover about the Insta360 1R cameras. Like the fact that you can buy a 360 module and you can easily connect it to the processor unit and the battery and there you go, you just got yourself a brand new panoramic camera by purchasing only the corresponding mod. I think this is the key for the success of the 1R series. A recommendation from my end, that's a frame with microphone cold shoe mount. Very good idea if you want to use external microphone. I noticed that Rode Video Micro doesn't work well, but Comic Boom XD, similar to the Rode Wireless Go, is a great addition for vlogging and helps a lot. Of course, there are a lot more other accessories you can purchase, and I've narrowed down the most interesting action camera accessories in a separate video that you can check out. Now, like the rest of the 1R variations, this one has three major components. The battery, there's an optional extended battery kit if you need longer endurance. The processing unit, where you put the micro SD and all the processing magic is happening, and also the touch screen is part of that unit. And the third part, that's the unit which combines the lens and the sensor. I've seen a number of remarks about the possibility of these connectors to become loose in time. Well, I keep on using that one for months. It's been underwater with some sand on the beach, in my backpack very often, so it's quite durable in my opinion and shows no signs of issues. In terms of technical specs, 1-inch sensor with quality optics co-developed with Leica, a powerful processor, 1-3-inch touchscreen 
integrated Wi-Fi, battery runtime up to an hour when shooting at the highest possible resolution, which is, by the way, 5.3K, support for external microphone, even Bluetooth is there. On the software and feature side, the camera continues to impress. Yes, you can shoot videos just as any other action cam, and on top, with remarkably good quality. Dynamic range is something I've never seen from other action cameras so far. Now, there's something quite specific about the One R. In order to quickly download and use the videos, you need the One R app or the computer version of the software. The files are recorded in INSV formats, which can be opened as a video file, but actually contains way more information. So if you open it from the app, you could actually add a lot of effects and also apply the so-called flow state stabilization. GoPros have HyperSmooth, DJI has Rocksteady, Insta360 have developed flow state. The major difference is the way it works. HyperSmooth and Rocksteady both are taking advantage of the higher shutter speed of shooting, which makes the footage not to look very cinematic and is a bit worse in low light condition. The flow state is based on information from the camera inbuilt gyroscope and allows footage to be stabilized in post-production, meaning that with the 1R, if you use lens filters and follow the 180 degree rule, you can get quite cinematic footage even without using a gimbal. So my expectation is that this particular edition of 1R will be highly appreciated by creators that need the best possible quality at the smallest possible scale. True, it is a bit more time-consuming than handling a GoPro, but the results can be stunning, especially when you apply some additional effects. And for all the video creators, Insta360 provide you with extra plugins and LUTs. Switching to the photo modes, and that's the part which can be a game changer for many people, because it eliminates the need to carry a large tripod and a camera with big optics for getting nice shots. You're looking into samples which are shot with the night mode, and files can be captured in both JPEG and DNG format. DNG files are RAW photos and allow a lot of post-production adjustments and improvements, which is of extreme importance should you want to get good results. Here's what the night mode is doing. It captures the same photo a number of times, one with normal exposure, and then another few shots with higher and lower exposure settings so that you can combine them into one single HDR photo in post-production. This also requires some extra knowledge and patience and software, and let me show you how this actually works with one of the most popular softwares for basic photo editing, Adobe Lightroom. Copy the photos into a separate folder, import them into Lightroom, easiest ways to go to the library and simply use drag and drop. Select the files, right-click, select Photo Merge, HDR, and give it a while. Since the files are pretty big, just wait. The end result is a photo which has extracted the maximum out of these few images, with a major benefit, much wider dynamic range. Compared to GoPro, for instance, the amount of details is crazy good. As for daytime samples, no surprise that they are excellent as well. In my opinion, this is the first action camera which has decent performance even in low light conditions. We can have now a quick look at the rest of the menus. A lot of pro-grade features are present and the so important adjustments for shutter speed, ISO, generally you have all the needed controls to output cinematic looking videos. In the settings you can adjust the camera behavior according to your own needs or connect even external peripherals. I regularly use the One R for connecting and testing the microphones on Bluetooth earbuds because it's super easy and quick and it's another proof how fluid these menus are. Now, after all the praising, as usual, there's a list with the things which are not too good or may require some improvements. The 1-inch sensor has sharp focus at a distance above 1 meter. Handheld shooting might make your face look blurry. So having a selfie stick is a good idea. You can find a good one linked in the description below the video. I'm not impressed with the external microphone performance. Insta360 promised good quality out of the Rode Wireless Go, and what a typical vlogger would truly appreciate is better support for Rode Video Micro. I think that the display is big enough, but sometimes switching between the frames per second using these swipe movements can be tricky. Also, if you have this cover glass on top and you want to take the cam out of the bracket, you need to unscrew it first 
and of course the extra layer of post-production that has to be done if you want optimal results. Is someone doing that all the time? It added like 20% on top of what I usually do when testing an action camera, but for newbies it can take much longer, so be prepared. In the end, I believe the One R is remarkable and amazing at the same time. To me, it feels like a hybrid between compact cameras and action cameras and the first ever action cam which enables you to shoot in low light with confidence. Yes, even six months after its release there still are some minor things that may be improved on a firmware level about external peripheral support, but concerning video and photo footage, the One R with the Leica mod is simply brilliant. I believe it is a perfect match if you're a passionate and sometimes patient photographer that prefers his gear to fit even in a pocket. Waterproof, modular, with great performance and user experience, and the largest image sensor on action cam ever, that's the Insta361R with the Leica module in a nutshell. Wow, that review was fun to make and I sincerely hope that you've learned a bit and got to know better the qualities of the One R. If you need any of the raw samples to play with or have a question about the workflow or any other feature, the comments section below the video is the right place to address all that. Link to each one of the products shown during the video you will as usual find in the description down there. And please use the links in order to support me. If all that was helpful, use the subscribe button because a lot of other kinds of cool tech are being inspected here. I'm Michael, it's been such a pleasure to welcome you on the channel today and looking forward to seeing you in the next episodes. Bye!